Hello, my name is Dr. Nish Sonwalkar, and as you know, I've been involved with online education for over 20 years now, and I have run almost 30 to 40 different pedagogical experiments um, uh, from the time when I was at MIT and afterwards, and my current research, uh, which is uh, focusing on the brain-based learning. Uh, based on my experience uh, as teacher as well as researcher, I've come up with uh, certain fundamental principles of adaptive educational systems. I want to share that with you uh, based on my experience. Number one uh, fundamental principle is one size fits all does not work for online education. Uh, and we have seen that over and over again, uh, same content does not appeal to everyone. You can put multimedia content, but if it is still same, it may not appeal to individual learning preferences. Second principle is, uh, which is most often misunderstood, is uh, information is not education. And most often uh, the thinking is that if I give you a lot of information, lots of different multimedia, you will learn. But over and over again, research shows that uh, it just leads to information overload and you really do not learn uh, with the information overload. So that's called information is not education. We have to distinctly define what is education. The third principle is learning requires a cognitive process along with multimedia content. So it's not sufficient that you provide multimedia and provide lots of interactive objects, animation, simulations, you name it. But what is important is that there is a cognitive process with that content. So there is a goal uh, to learn a subject matter and you vary student through different cognitive learning strategies uh, which are providing a cognitive process where they try to understand and then test their, their own knowledge and then go revise themselves, re revise their understanding or misunderstanding, correct that as they go along. So there, there is always a need with the content of a cognitive process. Fourth uh, principle is individual not only learn differently, and this was a very surprising result that we got based on the research, is that uh, not only students learn differently, but they also learn different content differently. So it's not necessary that if you are an inductive learner in mathematics that when you learn history you will still be inductive learner which is example based learner. You may be completely different. You may be completely uh, apprentice learner in mathematics and that's what we say is that uh, not only you learn differently but uh, the content uh, based on the content your learning strategy may also differ. And the fifth principle is a fundamental understanding that we got is every individual has a learning strategy based on cognitive development of their past experiences, past learning experiences, and learning pace uh, to digest the content. So not only you vary in your cognitive learning strategy based on the content, but you also vary in the, in the pace in which a learner will learn. So most often, and that's very important point here, that our current system most often forces you uh, in a very artificial timeline and also forces you to a particular pedagogy of learning. And both of that does not work with individual learners because they do have different learning strategy or learning style, so to say, and also different pace to learn. So I think both factors are working against learners in the current educational system. So we definitely have to reform uh, that particular problem with our educational system. And uh, the, the sixth principle is uh, individualized learning is the only way that we have found that reaches higher completion rates and faster learning. Even when there was a research done by Blooms and a lot of other research which have been collected, uh, what they found is that the face-to-face, one-on-one learning is the best model, which is what we call individualized learning. When you have a tutor who is uh, doing face-to-face -face teaching, that reaches the best level of completion. But when you take a classroom where it's not one to, uh, to one, but it's one to many, or even if you take online, then that uh, does not lead to higher completion rate. But if I can convert online education to an adaptive one-on-one -on -one personalized system, then I do have a hope to reach very high completion rates. 
And the seventh principle or fundamental understanding that I've come up with is learning is uh, not one dimensional, but it's multidimensional. And at least I found four dimensions uh, that are applicable for learning. Number one, uh, you have to have multimedia content in various media, text, audio, video, animation, simulation, cognitive strategies. You need different cognitive processes, apprentice process, incidental process, inductive process deductive process or discovery process and then you also need certain social interaction so that you can express your learning to your fellow students or fellow learners so that you can strengthen your synaptic uh, uh, connectivity about that subject matter so that's the seventh principle the eighth principle that i've come up with is the only meaningful assessment is the one that improves learners competency so we can do three point test and fail lots, lots of students because they didn't perform in a test. That really does not help and that's why we have so many uh, dropouts in the high school system as well as uh, in, in the higher education. Uh, especially if you look at the community colleges and high schools, there's very large dropout rate. Primarily because the assessment is not geared towards improvement. It's geared as a punishment mechanism. So what happens if I do not do well in three uh, midterms and the final, I will get a D grade, no matter how much I know about the subject matter. And let's say by uh, misfortune, I'm sick on all those three days of exams. Uh, and I just didn't do well in the exam. And so what, we, what my understanding or fundamental principle that I want to bring into adaptive educational system is that the system has to be a rewarding system rather than punishing system. In a reward system, uh, not only you will be told that how you did in your exam, but you will be immediately told how you can improve and will be given you a second chance or third chance or fourth chance to improve. And I think that's what we call continuous improvement in the learner competency. The ninth principle that I've come up with is anyone can reach learning competency with the le right learning strategy and the pace of learning. So what I'm saying is that there's no student out there which is dumb unless they have some mental issues and uh, they cannot focus on learning process. Uh, but what are even in those mental deficiencies, I believe there is a process we can find that you can reach those uh, students with certain deficiency like dyslexia or autism or even ADD. So I think uh, let's not give up on any student because given a learning, uh, a appropriate learning strategy that works with individual learning process and providing continuous intelligence, every student can reach the competency. So it's not the fault of student that we have 50% student uh, dropping out from the high school in 26 largest cities in the United States based on the statistics that I have read. But it's about providing them cognitive opportunities that they can learn better and not giving up on them by providing them various personalized learning cognitive opportunities and processes so that they can reach the competency. So every student can reach the highest competency level if we find the right approach for them and give them su sign sufficient time to reach that competency. Now, again, I come back to our artificial barriers of the, of the fixed length of the semester, fixed length of uh, the, uh, the, the educational semesters, and then also providing one model learning or single model learning from uh, which heavily depends on the teacher's teaching style. And the tenth and the last principle uh, which I go back to the teacher, the best role an instructor can play is to be the guide for student to learn how to learn. That's very important rather than focusing on the content that this is the content you will learn and you will master, you will, uh, you will remember, you will regurgitate in the exams and and then uh, uh, do all the testing like MCAS and all of these uh, uh, tests which are provided at the end of the school year uh, and score better. It's not about scoring and that's what leads to a lot of ill in our current system because that's what leads to cheating, that's what leads to uh, students to copy from each other because they are all trying to get the uh, grade, highest grade and highest score. 
but if instructor teach student how to learn and they guide them through and make them independent learners with the individualized learning processes available at their resources as a teacher and then they can do the best job by being the mentors of the individual learners and that's what happens in the model where is a teacher student tutor and student one on one which leads to very high completion rate so these are the 10 fundamental principles that i believe are applicable to not only online education system but any educational system however i am uh, restricting my comments specifically to adaptive educational systems thank you